I want to talk a little bit about David Bowie. And most of you know the news came out this morning that David Bowie had passed away after an 18-month battle with cancer. Bowie has always been uh, a very special musician and artist to me. And I have a background in music. And I remember the first time I ever heard David Bowie was probably Ziggy Stardust, Space Oddity. And I remember as we rolled into the 1980s as a kid and the whole MTV generation that was going on, um, you know, they had that little clip of David Bowie and Bing Crosby doing The Little Drummer Boy. And then as the 80s got into full swing, um, albums like Blue Jean and Let's Dance. Uh, you know, I, looking back now, I think a lot of that part of the 80s had a real sugar-coated quality to a lot of the music and art that was being produced at that time. And Bowie was able to operate in that context. But to me, those records had something extra special to them that separated them from the rest of the crowd. And I think Bowie's always done that. I remember by the time I got into high school, I had kind of gone back in Bowie's catalog and I was really into the Berlin trilogy of albums that he had produced with Brian Eno. And even in the 90s and 2000s, albums like Outside and Heathen, um, were just really special. I think the music was, was, it always fit the time, but there was always that extra special something of interest to it that kind of put it in its own class. And I think also very respectable is, is Bowie was one of those musicians who always um, forged ahead and did new things. He didn't kind of sit in one style or retire or become a cover band of himself. And I have the utmost respect for David Bowie. Obviously, image was a huge part of what Bowie did um, as well, having come out of what is known as the art rock scene. But I think all through his career, image played a big role in that. And there were two photographers that were associated primarily with David Bowie. There's Japanese-born Masayoshi Sakita, who is probably best known for the cover that he did for the third in the Berlin trilogy um, called Heroes. Uh, Heroes came out in 1977, and the photograph on the front of that, um, Sukita had based around a painting um, from 1917 from German painter Eric Heckel, um, which is a really interesting tie-in with something more modern, uh, particularly with the music of David Bowie. Interestingly enough, that same year, uh, David's good friend E. Pop released an album called The Idiot, which featured a very similar pose on the cover uh, by Andy Kent. And so I think that, you know, that was part of what you know, that impact that Bowie had in having this kind of art influence of what he was doing, which I think is primarily, um, you know, very significant, uh, particularly of those record covers. Um, also interesting too, and I don't know, if, you know, if, if this was intentional, probably so, um, David Bowie kind of has this overarching look at things sometimes, but um, if you consider that Heroes was the 12th album that he released, and you bump up to more recently, the 24th album, so if you double that, uh, the Heroes cover was revisited for, for his album the next day. Um, it was overlaid with typography, but there was definite relationship to Heroes with that record that was put out. The other photographer that's very commonly associated with David Bowie's career is a gentleman named Mick Rock. And Mick Rock um, shot a lot for Bowie. He was uh, his official photographer during the Ziggy Stardust years. He also worked with people like Sid Barrett and Peter Gabriel and uh, kind of earned the nickname the man who shot the 70s. Interestingly enough, last summer, I had the opportunity through Ovation TV, I was in Los Angeles and got to do an interview with Mick. And we talked a lot about David Bowie, obviously. And Mick is brilliant. He was a lot of fun to interview and extremely interesting as a photographer. And I want to roll a little bit of that interview and uh, get some of his words when we were talking about David Bowie. It's about projection, like Freddie Mercury. I remember when I first met him, I think the first live show I saw was about 800 people. Bowie, the first one I saw, was 400 people, but in both cases, you could see in their brains, they were projecting to a much bigger audience. They did big, big emanations for small venues, and um, they obviously knew where they were going. But you remember that people think David as Ziggy Stardust, most of that theatricality was him, the way he dressed, the way he would project, the makeup, the hair, I mean, and you know, of course he looked extraordinary, because um, he did look like, and once he shaved the eyebrows, he looked like he just landed, yeah. which was, you know, worked very well with people's idea of him. To me, these guys were like Baudelaire, Rambo, you know, Shelley, Keats, uh, Coleridge, uh, The Beats, they, uh, that's because this was my education. So that, I saw them in that light. So I had a huge respect for their talent going in, whether they were well known or they weren't. I could see what I saw and love what I loved. And God bless David Bowie, he's been very, uh, it, it never makes, believe me, David is a very nice, kind man. He will not make a fuss about it, he doesn't want his name associated. He is a gentleman of true 
class. David Bowie. I mean, a lot of people are. I mean, Iggy's a great guy. I love Lou. I mean, Freddie. Was, but there's David, and of course, he's raised the game to a whole other level. Uh, I mean, I don't know how to put it because I'm not taking the piss out of David ever at all. But when people ask me about him, I say I don't know. We have an email relationship nowadays, and if I inquire, he says he's fine. But I called it his Greta Garbo period, which is, you know, John Lennon had a Greta Garbo period too. So, um, one but I think it's very appropriate with David. It's sure. because he was not only a very bizarre looking character when he was younger, but he was also a beautiful man. And, and I, think, I think a lot of people owe David a, he had a certain like mummy thing about him. I mean, he was a, he actually cared about people. Um, and he showed it in his own quiet way. He never, and I suppose when you've got that much fame and glory and people want to kiss every part of your body, you don't need to scream it from the rooftops. What a decent, sweet guy. Well, he was a naughty boy in his day, but weren't we all, you know? But, um, but I, um, I will always take my hat off to David Bowie. Mick, thank you, sir. That's just an excerpt from my interview with Mick. And if you're interested in seeing the whole thing, I will link that up here or I'll also put it in the show description and I recommend you guys check that out. That was a lot of fun to do. And I think particularly it was exciting for me because of the musicians that Mick had worked with in his career and a lot of what they meant to me, particularly David Bowie, Peter Gabriel, uh, Sid Barrett even. And it was fun to do. And I remember driving out to North Hollywood where this interview was going to take place. And this was a press event. So there were two or three other camera crews that were going to do interviews as well. And a lot of them, it was really obvious they had only read the short bio. And there was a press event for an exhibition he was doing at the hotel and the little gallery there. And also he had a television series that was about to come out on Ovation. And a lot of people had only read the short bio. And when you interview an artist and you haven't done your research, they tend to pick up on that pretty quick. And I think Mick was a little bit frustrated. So by the time I set up, and of course I have no camera crew, I'm setting up two point and shoots and putting a lav mic on Mick and getting ready to go and he asked me if he could drop an f-bomb and i said absolutely and i think that started to loosen it up and i asked him questions that weren't necessarily related to the two press events that were happening with this and we ended up um, having a lot of good time and i think he loosened up and gave a really good interview with that and i'm really proud of of that interview and particularly mick for doing that and so anyway so i wanted to tie in just a couple of my associations mainly through the photographers with david bowie and you know, I haven't had a chance to think about this much, too. And I guess the other reason I just wanted to say something is because of what David meant to me. Um, you know, having been a fan of his music my entire life and how stylistically he kind of came along with us through each generation and was able to produce things that were accessible and very intelligent also at the same time. And I guess this is just my tribute to say thank you to David Bowie for all the inspiration. And I think... Bowie touched a lot of people's lives musically, and I think he was just one of the most brilliant minds of our generation. So that's about all I got for today. Until the next video, I'll see you guys then. Later.